We are rolling. What is up, Outdoor Junkies? This is Beers and Gears, episode seven. It's gonna be really hard to top episode six. That was a fun one. Uh, definitely gonna have more people on. Definitely gonna have Jeff back. Uh, but I am sorry I missed my Friday once a week deadline. Work and life got in the way. And I was actually planning on uh, taking a trip out to the Omegang Brewery out uh, near my buddy Zach's house in Oneonta. Actually, Cooper, Cooperstown, Cooperstown? Yeah, I think it's in Cooperstown. Um, weather got in the way. We, we had to postpone the trip. First, they canceled the beer festival, and I had all kinds of plans around that. And we were just gonna go out and maybe camp and check out some of the local breweries, and the weather just went to crap. So, yeah, so we're not, we're not doing that. Uh, let me see here, my table's crooked. All right, come on, table. There we go, okay. Everything's, I, man, I didn't even check. I hope I look okay. Is that good? Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I figured I would crank out a video and uh, try some beer, talk about some gear, because that's what we do here on Beers and Gear. Today is going to be the EDC episode. What is EDC, you ask? Everyday carry, of course. So what we're gonna do is talk about the things that are almost always in my pocket or in my bag. So it just depends on what's going on. So typically if I'm on a hike, if I'm going backpacking or I'm just wandering around like an idiot, which I do fairly commonly, um, these are the things that are in my pocket. Go. All that fun stuff right here, but you know the drill, guys. Before we look at gear, let's try a beer. What is this beer, you ask? Well, my friends, this is an industrial arts brewing torque wrench. Torque wrench is a New England style Imperial IPA coming in at a whopping 8.2% ABV and a ass kicking 100 per no 100 ibus so this sucker is gonna be hoppy uh this thing came in i think around 94 95 rating on beer advocate it got a 91 out of 100 on craft beer craft beers and brewers or something like that um yeah so this is gonna be i think i'm gonna do a stretch of like lo of local brews because Buffalo, Western New York, the area that I'm from, has quite the craft brew uh, renaissance happening. I mean, it is growing by leaps and bounds. We've got breweries literally everywhere. So that's, that's good for us beer heads. We love this sort of stuff. Um, so this one is actually where I wrote it down here. It's in the Hudson Valley region. And uh, industrial arts brewing, I don't know. Here, let me see if I can. Get this in front of my face so it catches the focus here. It's a beaut. All right. I like the art on these cans. I love looking at the cans. I don't know about you guys, but all right. Let's crack it in the sucker. Oh, yeah. All right. Going for the pour. Ooh. You see that there? Mm. 
Woo! I'm gonna leave a little bit in there. Look at that beauty. Oh, oh. Look at the head on that sucker. Mmm. Very strong citrus, a very grapefruity citrus. Look at that. Wow. That's like almost a two finger, two finger head. It's very hazy. As an Imperial IPA should be. Oh, that is a creamy white head on there. You know, I'd be interested. Let me know which part of this you guys like the best. Is it you're learning about gear, learning about beer, or all of the above? Or are you just here to make watch me make a fool of myself drinking beer? Either way, if that's what you're here for, that's also cool. I don't mind. I would also like to give a huge thank you to the 25, yes, 25 subscribers that I have. I know maybe for some of you that means absolutely nothing, but I really, truly appreciate the people who have taken the time to watch watch me do this because uh, I mean, I mean, I kind of do it for myself, but you know, knowing that there's somebody out there that is actually taking the time to watch this, it just tickles me pink. So thank you guys, really appreciate you. All right, let's get into this bad boy. Whoa, wow. Whew, it's good. Okay, second sip, you get some kind of hints of like a pine forest, kind of like gnawing on a pine needle. Not in a bad way though, not in a bad way. It's actually pretty good. Um, a lot of citrus coming through. You know, there's just so many IPAs out there. It's it's almost sad, you know. There's a lot of beers like triples, quadruples uh, that I really, really like that I think maybe are more challenging to make. So maybe that's why you don't see much of them. But, you know, IPAs are everywhere. So, you know, there's just a variety, a plethora, if you will. There's a plethora of IPAs to sample here. This one is good. I would probably say it's definitely not as good as the Dogfish had 90 minute. That one was just so easy to drink. This one has quite a bitter aftertaste. So now that it's been sitting for a minute, there's definitely uh, you know, a little bit of a bitterness that's kind of left in the back of the tongue there. On the front though, it's clean, it's refreshing. Yeah, that's good. This is a very good one. I like this. Yeah, let's get the rest of that in there. And they're strong. I mean, these beers are strong. I mean, I've seen very few that are less than like five, six percent. So 8.2. You can definitely tell the IBUs, it's it's up there on this one. It, it, it punches you in the back of the back of the tongue. Ah, burps and gears, babies. All right. Let's see if we can get through this episode without something dying. No lights, no cameras, no dying. All right. All right, so let's get into this. So let's get into my everyday carry. What are some of the things that I take with me on every camp out? So these are the things that I will always have on me when I go out into the woods. So let's start with, let's start with some simple stuff. So Zippo, right? Bad boy, this thing always comes with me. You can never, never go wrong with a good Zippo. Okay, Zippo. Uh, I think Zippos are made in Pennsylvania too. So these are made near nearby. Something if you don't know about it, I don't know exactly, I don't know if you can see that on there. Probably not, let me see if I can, ugh. I don't know, I gotta get a top, I gotta do a top down setup, all right. Maybe I'll get a picture of it, but anyways. So there's little slashes, if you look at the bottom of a Zippo, 
All right, so there's the name Zippo there, and then there's little slashes on the side. So uh, I'm pretty sure it's the more slashes, the more windproof it is. So this is three slashes on each side. Um, so this one's a, a fairly, let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, I lied. This one is not very windproof. What's up, Outdoor Junkies? It's future Justin coming at you. So apparently in my research, when I looked into the slashes on the Zippo lighter, that is not wind proof rating. That is actually the date in which it was made. So when I looked into it, I found out that my Zippo was made in 1984. So go figure. So yeah, it's not, it's not a windproof rating. That's actually one of the older methods of how they dated or possibly maybe even on the smaller cases uh, since my Zippo is a little bit of a smaller, smaller body. But yeah, so hey, past tense Justin, this is future you coming at you with a little bit of edumacation that is not windproof rating. That is when your lighter was made. So, all right, friends, thanks for watching. Peace, love ya. There you go. There you go. So, Zippos. Can't go wrong with a good Zippo. All right, so that sucker comes with me. All right, this one, this has been one of my favorite knives. This is an open all. So open all, I think I mentioned this in my other video, but it's a folder. It's got a lock and collar. All right, it's just it's just a nice it's just a nice knife, right? Like this is a nice knife. Uh, it's great for whittling. This is great for you know making kindling. It's a it's a good all per well not all purpose like utility style pocket knife. It's a little on the big side, but it's very light. Um, it almost you almost think it's flimsy or cheap at first, but it's not, man. This thing's been on many a campouts. It takes a nice edge. It's a it's a very nice knife. You can actually get these custom engraved. Um, yeah, I just, I just really, I just really like this knife. It's got a nice little leather loop on there. Comes with a very nice uh, leather case with a little belt strap on it. I always carry a pocket knife. Sometimes I carry multiple knives or multiple tools, but lately this sucker has always been on my person. <sighs> Torque wrench. It's good. You'll like it. Unless you don't like IPAs. If you don't like IPAs, then you should probably just go home and cry yourself to sleep because that's all there is. All right. Uh, this was probably my most carried knife up until I got the open all. This is a Kershaw, this is the Kershaw Skinner. Um, I think it's called like the mini Skinner. So very nice knife, the Kershaw, it's a Skinner style. Um, it's got this nice uh, grippy handle. It's a full tang construction, right? So full tang meaning that the blade and the butt end are all one single piece of metal. Uh, it's got a nice little kind of grooved thumb spot there and then a little divot for your finger. Knives like this are really nice for when you're in the woods and you're splitting things, you know, making kindling or need to split wood. You can actually use a rock or a, another log to kind of smash down on the spine of this to split wood. So it functions kind of like an like an axe, I guess, sort of a splitter. Uh, something like this, you would not you would not do that. You you could, but you'd probably break it. Uh, this full tank construction, very nice thick spine. Um, this is a very, very solidly built knife. Kershaw makes really, really nice knives. The only thing I don't like about this one, although this one's nice and deep, is that um, there's no way to secure the, the knife in there. So I probably need like a better sheath, but I have, I have not lost this one and this has been on dozens, dozens of trips with me. Uh, this is a very nice knife. So Kershaw, Kershaw Skinner. I don't even know if they make this one anymore, but it's a nice knife. Super important to have a nice knife. I mean, you really can't go wrong when you find a nice, just quality knife that you take everywhere with you. All right, what's the next thing that I take with me on just about every trip? 
Ooh, let's go into this. What is this? This is the Duke Cannon. What is it? Offensively large. <laughs> yeah. Lip balm with 15 SPF sunscreen. I mean, where would where would you be without a offensively large lip balm, right? I mean, you don't want your lips to chap, so lube them up in style. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Anyway, so the Duke Cannon, offensively large. So I always bring some chapstick with me. Uh, this one's kind of, this is new to the kit, but it is offensively large, so. All right, oh, what else do I got here? Okay, one, this one's kind of funny. Um, I'll, I'll do a twofer on this one. So I always bring a climbing grade carabiner. Now let's get something straight here, people. There's two types of carabiners, right? There's the ones like this, right? On here, I don't know if you can see that. This one here, okay. This is not for climbing. You try to climb with this or you try to support a human weight with this, uh, you will fall, maybe die. So not for climbing, okay? This, this is a climbing grade carabiner. It's got a locking collar on it. This will support your weight. I always bring two of these. Uh, they come in super handy for all kinds of things, lashing things to your backpack. If something breaks, like I hammock camp a lot, so if you need something for your hammock, these are great to support your hammock. And speaking of which, I always bring paracord, okay? Uh, military strength paracord has, I wanna say like a, at least a 300 pound uh, weight rating, somewhere around a 250 up to 300-ish pound. This particular one is set up for my bear bag. So this is what I use to sling over a tree branch and hang my bear bag with. So that's why I have this non-climbing grade carabiner. Um, but this, this piece of paracord will hold just about any human's weight, all right? So if you're ever in a pinch, I usually keep a, you know, couple, this is probably about maybe 20-ish feet, um, but you should always have some paracord. It comes in super handy. And again, a climbing grade carabiner. So anytime I go out camping, I have a climbing, I have two climbing grade carabiners on the back of my pack. Hmm. This is good. Yeah, oh, look at that, I got some, that's called lacing. So I'm here to educate you guys. Let's learn about beer and gear together. All right, so this is called lacing. It's when the head kind of sticks to the glass there. That is nice, it's, a, it's beautiful. Oh, I see you, I see you. Okay, sorry, it's been a, it's been a rough couple of days at work. Um, all right, let's talk about something else here. Okay, uh, this is my ultimate survival technologies. Um, it's a ferium rod, or a ferium rod with a with a striker. Ha 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 ha! I should have been filming in like ultra slow mo. Anyway. Uh, these things are great. These are awesome for starting fires. These last forever too. Ooh. So get yourself a good fire starter. When you go out camping, you should probably have multiple ways to start fire. And this is nice because it's got a little storage compartment in the bottom. And then I just keep some uh, tinder of sorts. So this is just a little like um, fabric and wax ball. You can kind of shave it up a little bit with your pocket knife. Hit it with a spark. And then you got fire. All right. What else do I have? What else do I keep? All right, we're just gonna go, we're just gonna dig in here. Um, <laughs> all right, so 
If I were to say that this came with me on every trip, I would lie. I would be lying through my teeth because I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten this spoon. This is the uh, Sea to Summit Titanium Spoon. And I've had to whittle spoons out of wood. So if you don't have your spoon, you better damn well have your pocket knife so that you can whittle a freaking spoon out of some wood and then you can eat your food so that you're not starving when you're out camping. But yes, I can't tell you how many times I've uh, forgotten this spoon because I don't know, I washed it, put it in the strainer to dry and then forgot it and then went camping. Uh, but the Sea to Summit, any really any spoon, this, is, this one is just, it literally weighs like, like nothing. Yeah, it weighs nothing. Okay, so, should I just do the rest of the video like this? No, okay. But a good spoon, but the Sea to Summit uh, titanium spoon, very nice. It's way better than a wooden spoon that you whittled in the woods. I will tell you that right now, if you were wondering. Okay, next thing. Uh, let's see, I've had this for a few years now. This is the, I don't even know what model this is anymore. This is the Black Diamond. I think it's like the Storm. Mm, I wish I knew. Let me see if I can, no, it doesn't say it. The Black Diamond headlamp. Um, so this one's nice because it has multiple settings on it. So on, right? And then you can, mm, And then you can right off red light okay and if, for those of you who don't know uh, a headlamp that has a red light feature is very nice so when you're hiking in the dark and you don't want to kind of throw off your um, I don't know I don't want to say night vision because we don't we, we don't have night vision uh, we're not elves but uh, if you don't want to kind of throw off like your acclimation to the dark with your eyes, then uh, this, the red light is a really good option for you, okay? But that's the Black Diamond, I want to say it's the Something Storm head, I just don't remember. I don't know if they make this particular model. I think they have an up, upgraded version of this. I will tell you it destroys batteries on full blast, but the nice thing is, is you can adjust the brightness of this particular one, which is an amazing feature. And um, I always bring, it's triple A's, I always bring a couple, uh, an extra set of triple A's just in case the trip goes a little longer and I wanna make sure I have light. All right, this is a silly one. This is just, this is me, this is my, uh, my dorkiness. So this is, this is a platypus bag. It has a little carabiner clip on here. And what I do is I clip them to the shoulder strap of my backpack. And I usually, I'll use a carabiner and clip that on there so I have a little slack and then I can kind of drink out of it as I'm hiking. I always have this here so I can just sip out of it like that. Um, the other benefit to this is too is I can tuck it in my my coat or my if it's really cold out and I can kind of keep it warm so that it doesn't freeze whereas you don't really have that option with a water bladder in the back and I've had them rupture uh, in my bag so this particular setup or you know the tubing freezes and that sort of thing so with something like this you can kind of tuck it away and you're much better off in that respect as far as have, not having your water freeze so you got something to drink and I, I just I always like this particular style. I don't know why. So this is something, I have some ideas for a better version of this, but I'm not giving it away. Okay. Uh, all right, man, last two things I got here. Let's talk gear ties. Oh yeah. I love these gear ties. These things are great. So they come in all different sizes. What can't you do with a gear tie? Make coffee, you can't make coffee. You can't drive a gear tie. Okay, there's a lot of things you can't do with a gear tie, but man, these things are great. So I got these for Christmas 
and I've always kind of wanted them. It's just one of those things where you just, you don't buy it for yourself for one reason or another. But they're, they're great. I mean, they're just, it's a good, it's an awesome, it's a very novel tool that you didn't know you need, needed, needed it. It's a very novel tool you didn't know you needed until you had it. So once you get it, you're like, shit, how did I live without that? I don't know, now I need them. And they come in all different sizes. So the gear ties, they're made by Night Eyes. These are awesome. I love them. Mwah. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to just enjoy this for a second, so bear with me, guys. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I love it. Okay, all right, last but not least. Medical kit, emergency kit. This is my every. This is my everything. So I recently changed my kit. Um, I used to have two separate kits. One was a uh, like medicine, and then one was kind of like my toiletries bag. Uh, I've since consolidated everything into one. Uh, I have not. Not gonna lie. I have not taken this particular setup out on a camping trip yet. It's all the same stuff, just stuffed into one bag. The only thing that's not in here right now is toilet paper. I usually just hand roll a big wad of toilet paper and bring it with me. I mean, I would assume if you're pooping in the woods, you want to wipe, so you need toilet paper. Um, the <laughs> I'm gonna just quick zip through this because there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, this is a folding brush. Not on camera. I don't even know what, I literally have no idea. I didn't even look at a mirror before I started this video. Um, mm, little toothbrush. This is a weird one and this is because I've had issues with teeth in the past. This is eugenol oil. This is, it's like a clove oil extract. This stuff is insane. If you've ever had a toothache before, Oh, you know, you know. You put it on a little piece of cotton, jam it in your uh, sore tooth. It's a anti uh, bacterial static. I don't think it's particularly an antibacterial, but it's bacterial static, I do believe. And it is analgesic, which is pain relieving, similar to like say ibuprofen and Tylenol. But this is um, local, right? So you're gonna put it directly on the uh, the location of the pain. So ibuprofen is systemic, right? You put it in your mouth and it is systemic pain relief. This is local pain relief, similar to like lidocaine. I have tried like say lidocaine and you know benzocaine, uh, local for toothaches and stuff like that, but this stuff, eugenol. Beware, this is very um, irritating to mucous membranes. So like your gums, your tongue, you'll drool like crazy if it really gets on your, your gums. But uh, I will not go anywhere without that because I've been in you know the woods and got a toothache and it sucks, man. And that stuff, it works. It works fast and it works well. A little roll of duct tape. <sighs> duct tape. Oh, say no more. Chapstick. I mean, big chapstick, little chapstick. Okay. Toothpaste, ibuprofen, Benadryl, and anti diarrheals. The Smith's pocket knife sharpener. So this is knives. Knife. This is knives. This is, it's so knives. Uh, so this has uh, two grooved slots here for sharpening your blades. And they're labeled, one is for ceramic and one is for your steel or carbide blades. It's got a nice little holder on there. And then basically all you do is just just like that, it's nice and easy. And then it also has this is for uh, serrated blades. Extra fire starter. You can never have too many ways to start fires. 
water purification tablets, which I think one of them is now water purification dust. Hmm? Yep. Tin foil. Okay, this is no ordinary tin foil. This is super tin foil. But so if you have a uh, alcohol stove or you just need a little bit of wind resistance or you need to help me, help me. You know, you can use it as a reflecting tool to get attention. If you're caught on a tropical island, I would just stay on the tropical island. All right, let's just pull it all out. Let's just get, let's get it out. Come on, everybody. Okay. Mylar blanket. These are, everybody should have one. If you don't have a Mylar blanket, you're not even an outdoorsman. So if you do not have a Mylar blanket in your emergency kit, stay home. Okay, just stay home. Safety pins, two, dos, dos safety pins. Tweezers for plucking your, no, tweezers. Uh, nail trimmers, but I always try to carry nail trimmers with me. Um, obviously that's kind of not a super important thing, but it's extra flints for my Zippo. Medical tape, coffee filter. Uh, when we did the filtration episode, you may have remembered me suggesting carrying a coffee filter with you. This is literally just some filter paper. That's all it is. Tums, <laughs> Tums to Tums, Tums. Uh, I always carry uh, Tums, AKA blah, blah, blah. My stomach sucks. And so I bring this with me everywhere so that I don't die from gut rot. Real quick, we're gonna zip zip. Moleskin, triple antibiotic ointment, after bite, alcohol wipe, alcohol wipe, a band-aid. Little bandits. More afterbite. Suture. Okay, listen, you may not carry suture, but if you're with me, I have suture. I will suture your rips, tears, holes, wounds. A big bandit. That's a big ass band. That's a big ass bandit. With some gauze. Alright. So obviously that is not the only things that I carry, you know, but that is a guaranteed, this pile of disaster here that I have just gone over is, it always comes with me for sure. This is something that I always carry with me. These, these items that I went over, I generally always bring with me. So it's my everyday carry, but I will tell you, this is my favorite. I love this little guy. It's just so cute and light. All right, guys, I appreciate you. Um, thanks for hanging out. Peace, love ya, and don't forget to get outside, all right? Have a good one.